When I reviewed the Toolkit RC M6 version 2 charger six months ago, it was clear they'd been listening to their customers and they improved the balance port circuit over the V1, making the M6 a very capable and dependable battery charger. You could use it to charge anything, any chemistry up to 6S at 150 watts, and it was very small and it made an ideal field charger. Toolkit RC are busy developing new products and now they've just released this M7 multifunction balance charger and it's a direct successor to the M6 at around the same price, size and the same features. But it's a 200 watt 10 amp charger which is 33% more than the M6 could deliver. Let's take a closer look. Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. This M7 multifunction charger has all the same features as the M6, but Toolkit RC have made some notable improvements. And gone are the capacitive buttons, and in is the clickable scroll wheel and the exit button. And that's pretty common to their recent family of chargers. And the user interface on here is just like the M6D, M4D and others. Other than that, it's the same size as the M6 and despite being only 10 grams heavier, it's got 33% more power at 200 watts. So the Toolkit RC magicians have done their thing yet again. And this will charge any chemistry up to 6S voltages, plus it's got other signal and test functions the M6 has got. I'll come on to that later. You can plug a 7 to 28 volt DC power supply in here and check out my review of their new P200 supply, which is a perfect companion to this. And it doubles as a general purpose variable bench power supply. It's a fantastic piece of kit. This is the signal port. I'll talk about that in a minute. That's for the test functions. And there's a USB connector that you can use to supply anything that needs five volts. And this doubles as an input so you can update the firmware on here. On the bottom, there's a fan and you've got some little fold out tilt legs. And on this side, you've, you've got the main battery port on an XT60 and a 6S balance port. And this has got the same balance circuit as the V2 M6 charger and all subsequent Toolkit RC chargers. And that's accurate to five microvolts. So if I turn it on, You get a burst of fan and the doody do. And before you ask, no, the fan isn't on all the time. It only comes on when the internal temperature of this box gets high enough. And I'm pretty bored with answering that question on every single battery charger I review. So there. Anyway, the display is all new and follows the same user interface design that they've got on all their other products. It's very clear and easy to see outdoors. So let's try connecting a battery up to this. Goes that way round. There we go. So display, like all the other charges, very similar. The scroll wheel flicks you around the status on the bottom here and some measurements tells you what mode it's in. This shows you the voltage of each of the individual cells and this is 4S and this scroll wheel it's very positive it's the same one very similar to the one that they put on the P200 very positive and confident to activate it you just press the button so this takes us into the charge screen so what do we do we pick a battery chemistry lipo High voltage LiPo, iron lithium, lithium iron, nickel metal hydride, lead acid, and I'm glad to see that they've kept the UAV battery. Very useful this. It allows you to use this little box here to charge DJI batteries. So we can have Mavic, Mavic Spark, yeah, Phantom and Inspire. And I use those quite a bit on some of my other chargers, particularly the M6D charger. So let's go back and choose LiPo. 
because that's what we've got over here. It'll auto detect the number of cells. You can put it into charge mode, discharge mode or storage. Discharge mode is interesting. It's got a number of modes. So you can discharge this internally or you can discharge it via an external load, which you connect here. Very clever. Let's get rid of that and go into charge mode. There we go. You can change the end voltage if you want to tweak it around a bit, but 4.2 is normal and that's the default for LiPos. And you can select the charge current. This is ooh, 1300. So let's go. There we go. And you just press start, confirms the voltage that you're charging to, 16.8 volts. And we started charging. Very neat. So this is showing me on this display, and it, it's very different from the M6, but it's actually the same as all their other chargers. So along the top here, we've got this sort of header bar here. So this shows the it's in power selection mode. And this is the voltage that I've got on DC input. And if I check on my P200 over here, this is showing 20.6. Yeah, very good. And then we've got the accumulated power consumption of the input up here. And that's a voltage. Sorry, it's not the voltage. What are you talking about? That's the temperature inside the box. And that little icon spins when the fan is on. Down here is showing you the volts and the current. And V there shows you that it's in constant voltage. It could show constant current. That's showing the working hours. And this thing over here, this number, this 18 milliamp hour hours, that's showing you the cumulative capacity. And the mode we're in here is showing you charging, showing you what our target is, 4.2 volts, and we're charging at 1.3 amps. This is the actual, this is the target. And this is the power consumption over here. So we can flick around on the bottom here. This is showing us the charge state of each of the individual cells. And you can see these are flashing orange and red. And sometimes they just stay gray. That's showing you how hard the balance port is working and what it's doing. Flick across to the next page and this is showing you the internal resistance of each of those cells. And this battery is quite old now. You can see we've got cells two, three and four are about the same, sort of seven, eight milliohms. Cell number one is 22 milliohms. It's a good indication this battery is probably on its way out but it's good enough. So that's how you charge, all pretty simple. But you can do more with this. If I want to, let's just show you this quickly. If I want to change the current whilst it's charging, you just press the scroll bar, scroll wheel rather, and you can tweak around to whatever you want, or you can select stop. Nice and simple. So let's take a look at the setting screen. You get to that by long pressing the scroll button. There's a whole bunch of things in here that you can change. There's a whole lot of input settings, security settings. That's just when the fan comes on and when you get alarms, when the battery's low, that sort of thing. Um, most of this is fairly normal. The interesting things are work completed. So you can choose whether this stops charging at the end of its charge cycle when you're charging a battery or you can leave it in trickle charge mode and that's the mode I tend to use on all my Toolkit RC chargers. Battery selection, I've got that turned on, I'll turn that off but I'll show you what that is in a minute. You can change the backlight, the buzzer, volume, language plus a whole other thing, you can set it back to default. Anyway, let's go back to where are we? battery selection. As you saw, when I first started trying to charge the battery, you hit the button, it takes you to this charge page, and you choose how you want to charge it and what type of cells they are and everything. But 
if you say you go to battery selection and turn that on this is nice because what it does it's sort of like a most recently used menu on a program really it remembers what you set last time so if I hit this guy now it's remembered that these were the last two settings and I it's just a quick menu so if I'm using common batteries you know charge this guy up all the time then that setting will be there and I can just pick it hit start well there's no battery connected but you get the idea and that is really useful as well as being a battery charger this is a signal and test device if you like it's a multi-function charger same as the M6 and on the M6 there used to be a big button on the main screen that allowed you to select that this is slightly different what you do is long press the exit button and you get into the measurement screen so we can measure resistance which is the internal resistance of a cell and that just takes us to the page that you've seen before very nice so let's long press and get into that again now what we can do is on this port here you can plug anything in that you could have a receiver that's putting out PWM signal PPM or S bus for example and you can see those signals on this little graphic display so it's a great way to help you debug your electronics and find out where things aren't working very useful come out of that the other side of that so that's the test part if you like or measurement side what you can do is generate those signals on this output as well so you could generate a PWM or PPM or S bus so if I run so I run down here select that on channel 6 select this wind this about and I could have an ESC plugged in here or a servo whatever I like you can then use that to test your equipment and drive it very useful so it's a great little toolbox there's an option here for testing ESC's so you plug that into again the port here for the signal and that's for the output and you can drive it with different ratio different voltages etc etc and this doubles as a DC power supply so you can just take the output of this and set it to be whatever you want very clever and this is exactly the same as the M6 but they just cleaned up all the display very nice okay, let's just turn all this off now you can plug the USB here into your computer and this box will appear as an external drive just grab the new firmware download from Toolkit RC website and just simply drag the file onto the drive recycle the power on here and bish bash bosh you've upgraded the firmware it is so simple it's really very nice so Toolkit RC have done it yet again this has got all the same functionalities as the M6 multifunction charger but everything has been improved the user interface the buttons and it delivers 33% more power and all for the same price of around 30 pounds that's sort of around $40 I'll leave some links in the description below so you can check out the latest prices availability and discounts this is on pre-order at Banggood at the moment and do visit the Toolkit RC website to check out their awesome range of products. And don't forget, you don't need a desktop DC power supply like the P200 or something similar. You can just power this off another LiPo. And this is great for when you're out in the field. And this is small enough to get lost in the bowels of your flight bag, which I found to my cost. So, Toolkit RC, you've nailed it yet again. As always, thanks for watching, and if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if you want to see more like this, remember to subscribe and hit the bell down here to get notified when I post new content. I'll see you next time.